Hey guys, it's Kelly Powers with The Berean Perspective. Thank you for joining. If you are new to my channel, I'd like to encourage you to please subscribe, like this video, and please leave a comment after watching this video. Now, I really want to encourage you to please watch this video through because this is an important video, in my opinion. Now, I believe a lot of my videos are important. Don't get me wrong. Um, but this is something that I'm seeing as now seem to be more of a trend that I'm noticing uh, with what's going on out in the YouTube world. Uh, there's a guy who you guys probably know that I have had discussions with, a guy named uh, Sean Griffin, who is Kingdom in Context. He has a channel called Kingdom in Context, got a pretty big base over there, bigger than mine. He's also connected with other people out there, a guy named Ken, who has a channel called Hanging on His Words. And so what I want to share right now with you guys is that recently, I've been watching some different videos with this guy, and some of you know that I've had a debate with him in the past, And um, but I want to highlight a few things right now. Recently, he had uh, a panel. Uh, I'm calling it the Round Table of Heretics because they openly were laughing about calling themselves heretics because literally I think all of these guys except for one of them has a Trinitarian background. The one at the bottom right, uh, I believe his name was Marlo. He is an, actually a former uh, Jehovah's Witness now. Um, but all these other guys have had some kind of influence uh, from Sean in some way. And uh, these guys all reject the Trinity. Uh, they have a very unusual view about Jesus being a God, but not eternal. Uh, majority of these guys even believe that Jesus is a high priest in heaven right now doing sacrifices for you. They actually call it uh, giving the Father a barbecue. And that meaning that Jesus is actually in heaven doing physical sacrifices, blood sacrifices in heaven to atone for your sins. If you truly believe in this particular Jesus or whatever Jesus, as long as you believe in some kind of Jesus, for the most part, um, if you're a oneness, if you're Trinitarian, um, if you are whatever they would be classified are. Now, these guys, um, at least for Sean and the guy Ken, I have actually had a challenge um, or actually... I uh, did a video exposing them a little while back when they did a horrendous video on Mike Winger. Both those guys would be labeled uh, or at least classified as Arians in their theology of how they view the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. And in fact, when I had my debate with Sean, I asked him live on his channel specific questions, which basically showed and demonstrated, yes, he is classified as an Arian. And so anyway... Now, these guys that recently did this, which this coming Friday, I will be planning on doing a part one in regards to what they taught about the Holy Spirit. Now, why is there concern for this? Recently, Sean was on the Gospel Truth Channel, which I've been there a couple times in the past, uh, debated a couple of Unitarians. Recently, Sean was on the Gospel Truth Channel debating Matt Slick. And many people know Matt Slick. Matt Slick's been around for a while. He's the guy that has a really big website called Karm.org. He's done lots of debates. And frankly, there is a lot of good things that he does share that at times I think are great. But he's getting older, and this is not a jab in any way, but his memory is not as good as it used to be. And a lot of times when he goes into debates, he doesn't really take the time to study or to be even prepared for the person he's talking with. He just kind of does it off the whim. When I found out that he was doing a debate with Sean, immediately I thought to myself, if Matt isn't prepared for Sean, he's going to be turned into a pretzel quite quickly, and it actually ended up being true. Matt did not know anything about Sean. He didn't know anything about Sean's background, because Sean has a very bizarre background of beliefs. He has kind of a mixture of Jehovah's Witnesses and Seventh-day Adventists mixed into one with throw in some Hebrew, Torah, Judaism kind of views in the name of Jesus. He's got a very unusual mixed bag of beliefs. I have watched a lot of his videos painfully just to try and find out, at least to have some grasp of what he believes. A lot of people that I've seen that I've talked with Sean on his channel or where he's been on other people's channels have not done a very good job. Now, this is, again, not elevating myself. This is not making myself any better because I have my own faults, my own shortcomings. Sometimes I blunder. Sometimes I say things that could have been better. I get it. We all have our bad days. I get it, right? But I'm noticing this guy, Sean. He is going around because he claims he's a former Trinitarian. He knows the arguments. He went to Bible college, apparently. Uh, he likes to act like he knows Hebrew and Greek. But when people are talking with him, he's able to manipulate conversations and twist things to where it turns it on the other person 
and gets them on their heels. And so in this debate with Matt Slick, uh, as much as I would like to root for him and doing a great job, he did not do a very good job. Now, he did defend the Trinity, but in regards to, sorry, there's a bug flying over here right now, apparently bothering me. Um, but he did not do a very good job. And the reason why he didn't do a very good job, because he did not know Sean's background. That's why. It's not as if Matt can't debate, because Matt can. And sometimes he can be quite good and quite aggressive in a lot of cases. In this particular case, because he was not familiar with Sean, he did not do as a good job as he could have. And he even showed in the debate he got very irate at times, very uneasy, was getting a little emotional. And sadly, he actually threw out a lot of jabs and insults at Sean, which completely was uncalled for. But that is unfortunately just the way things are. Now, recently, I also noticed um, I was just kind of perusing something on Sean, trying to see what was kind of going on. And I'm a little bit familiar with both Radar Apologetics and God Logic. I don't know... Um, either of them that well. I've seen a few videos from both those guys and they seem to have some good content at times. Uh, and it looked like Sean was actually on one of those guys, probably most likely God's logic. I'm not sure which, because this is uploaded on Sean's channel. So I'm not sure exactly whose channel he officially was on, but he was on one of their channels and he was, you know, the one that was called, you know, apparently they were challenging heretics to come on. So Sean apparently went on there. So he kind of openly he agrees he's a heretic. That's pretty cool. But anyway, listening and checking these guys out, they had good stuff to share. But the problem is they still didn't know enough about Sean's background. And so Sean was able to continue to manipulate or get out of the questions being asked. And I'm not saying, again, these guys did a bad job. I'm just saying if people are going to be engaging with talking with Sean, you guys got to know better his background. I said it before, I'll say it again, and it doesn't make me anything special. But when he invited me a little while back, three, four months ago, whatever it was, when I went on his channel originally, right? I checked him out for probably about two months before this because he reached out to me and I watched and listened to 14 plus or 15 videos of his to get some kind of grasp or background because he has a very unusual approach and how he explains things. And like I said before, it's kind of a mixture of Jehovah's Witnesses, Seventh-day Adventists, and kind of a little bit of a Torah-keeping kind of stuff. It's a really mixed bag of a bunch of stuff. And so anyway, watching these guys and seeing these guys do this, I'm seeing people having this trend. They're not having a good approach talking to them. A little while back before I went on Sean's channel, both guys, uh, Dr. Douglas Hamp and another guy here at the bottom down there, I can't remember his name right now. I think his name is Scott something. Um, Douglas Hamp. Is um, is a Trinitarian. From my understanding, the other guy below, uh, he has at least had the appearance and the way he taught a oneness perspective. Nonetheless, either way, when they were on Sean's channel and Sean and his other friend there, who's uh, kind of like his, um, you know, guy that's on the lot with him doing videos, named Ken, hanging on his words um, channel, they were able to and at times just really kind of throw things off balance for these other guys. And again, now Doug Douglas did a great job in most cases. However, still because not knowing good enough Sean's background, they weren't as effective. Now, this again, in any way, in no way am I trying to toot my own horn, make it clear, okay? But when I got invited onto Sean's channel a while back, a few, about three, four months ago, whatever it was, maybe a little bit longer, when I went on there and we had about a good hour and 55 minutes before eventually he kicked me off. He removed me from his stream a couple of times, muted me a couple of times because I wasn't letting him manipulate the conversation. He thinks otherwise he's trying to play the victim, whatever else, but I did not allow him to manipulate the conversation. And I was very patient. I was very kind. And I asked a lot of specific questions to scripture and I was able to give efficient answers back to him to his questions, his trick question he tried. But what rattled him towards the end, which was supposed to be the discussion about the Trinity, is the fact that when I finally actually started explaining him what the Trinity was and why those who don't believe in Trinity have a different Jesus, he became very uh, uncomfortable and eventually removed me from his stream, and which was really sad to me because it shows what a coward he was, right? So what am I trying to say to you guys out there right now? When I debated him, I gave a good debate, and I knew what I believed. I was solid. I let him lead the conversation, and towards the finally, about the last, maybe one-third of it, I was able to finally ask myself, myself ask him a question about who 
is the Holy Spirit. And because he was not um, familiar and ready for what I was going to share, I was able to demonstrate from John 14, John 15, John 16, Acts 5, Acts 13, Acts 20, and other places, 1 Corinthians 12, 11, how the Holy Spirit, according to Scripture, is not only divine and distinct person, but he is identified as God. And Sean could not respond to that, right? Now, what am I trying to say to you guys? What's my point of doing this video? I'm not doing this video because it gets me excited. I'm doing this to help you Christians out there, you Trinitarians out there. Listen, if you are going to engage with this guy, you need to be better repaired, right? You need to know better what he believes. He is like, like I said, go watch my, it's on my channel. Go watch the, 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 the debate I had with him, the full debate and see it, watch it. Notice how I approach things. Notice how the questions that I asked him, I allowed him to lead. And at times, then I would eventually kind of take it a little bit farther. You've got to know what it is. This guy has come almost like back in the nineties and early two thousands, the emergent church came out, all the false teachers, the emergent church. And this question back in those days was you couldn't nail them. Like it was trying to like to really get to them was to nailing jello to the wall. You can nail that jello to the wall, but it just kept on sliding through. People like Sean are slippery. They're slippery, right? Maybe Sean should have Matt Slick's last name, Slick, because he's able to get out of a lot of stuff, right? And this is, again, not me complimenting Sean. He may even watch this and think, oh, wow, that's great. Look at this guy. No, because heresy and false teachers look like sheep. They sound like sheep. And remember, the Bible says the devil knows scripture, right? So look, because Sean has openly rejected the Trinity, and the true identity of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, and he actually engages to counter and refute and to at times even try to expose those who hold to the biblical doctrine of the Trinity. My duty as a Christian, as an apologist, as a fellow brother to you guys out there, uh, I am here to help you because the Bible talks about mark those who cause divisions. Be careful of those who preach a different gospel. Galatians 1, 2 Corinthians 11. Those who teach contrary things to what Jesus. Remember Colossians 2, 8 talks about those who have traditions of men, elements, principles of the world, uh, all these different things, things that are contrary to what Christ taught, what Christ taught, right? So before this bug gets me any more waving my hand in the hair, I'm going to leave this just for the video just to have fun. Here's the thing, guys. Look. I'm not perfect. I'm not the greatest debater out there. I know it. But look, I know what the Bible teaches, and I want you guys out there who are actually engaging, be better prepared. Be better. And when you engage in your sharing points, be ready for the counters. Be ready for the objection. Be ready. Why do we believe in here? It's not because of creeds. It's not because of church fathers. It's because of the Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament both thunder, monotheism, who has been revealed through three distinct persons. There's one God who has been revealed through the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and they are one in eternity, one in nature, one in identity. And so friends out there, brothers and sisters, I encourage you, I plead with you, even if other people like this, be prepared. Be one of those like where the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 9 about become all things all people that you might Win some to Christ. It's just like if you're witnessing to a Jehovah's Witness, you've got to know their literature. If you're witnessing to a Mormon, you've got to know their literature. If you're witnessing to a Muslim, you've got to know their literature. If you're witnessing to a Catholic, you've got to know their literature. Whatever you're talking to, whoever it is, an atheist, whoever it is, be familiar with that person and their beliefs. If you try to go into it thinking you can just go by because you've got a great smile and you're a great talker and you've been a Christian for years, listen. You may make some good points, but if you're not careful, just like how the expression back in the day is that the average uh, Christian will be turned into a pretzel within 30 seconds talking to a Jehovah's Witness if they don't know the Bible, right? So the thing is, we've got to be prepared. We've got to be studies of the Word of God and know the opposition. Amen? Check out this coming Friday, if you haven't already, and my, my, my uh, stream's been uh, scheduled. That'll be a part one addressing the roundtable of heretics on the mis- uh, representation of the Trinity and the Holy Spirit. I hope that you guys check this video out, share it with other people, and leave comments. Because if you have comments and questions, 
I will do my best to give you some satisfactory answers pertaining to what Sean believes and how you can be better in witnessing to people like him. Lord bless you. Please subscribe. Please like this video. Please leave a comment. And if you'd like to help to support this ministry in any way, I do have a PayPal donation link in the video description. Lord bless you. And may you grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.